And here we are. Agalon Wastes, which will hopefully not be a waste of your time nice. or hours indeed. It's a small map. It's a brutal map. This might not take very long. So, ladies and gentlemen, spawning to the southeast position in the Red Trunks, currently tied one apiece in this best of five series. It is Gamma Bears Sen. And, of course, his opponent up in the top left side, representing Team Root, kind of fumbling on the last game, but showing a very solid game number one. It is Root's vibe. Yeah, I mean, if I'm honest, the, there are just times in a ZVZ where you can just flat out lose. Yeah? yeah, And you just end up losing to a particular build order and a particularly well-executed attack. And two base, Baneling Bust, absolutely. That could work totally fine, assuming that you are able to execute it correctly. I think Vibe's response at that point was about as good as it could have gone. And uh, th this is something that would be really interesting to see the players go back, take command, and try to fight that battle again, you know? And yeah. see how that actually ended up going out. But sadly, they're actually playing the tournament, so they're not going to be doing that. But it's something that I think is going to be very interesting to see uh, where we go when we go to the future of Heart of the Swarm, honestly. Because that kind of analysis and that kind of speculation of what if, the kind of fantasy idea is really interesting to me. Yeah, and I got to say, uh, something that's pretty interesting about the Take Command feature is that when we were doing those at, like, the Blizzard launch event, for example, you know, obviously the build order means a lot and when yeah. it comes into a game. That's just how it is. But in the games that we were able to go back and replay at certain points, there was drastically different results based on minor decision-making choices yeah. that those players made. So, you know, StarCraft isn't all about what's your build order or what's your matchup as the decision-making plays a huge, huge role. Now, one thing I want to mention about Sin so far uh, and even about Vibe is Vibe has seemed to be more comfortable trying to get to the macro phase, trying to get to the tech choice phase, whereas Sin in both those games has done a relatively low tech tech uh, timing attack. The first yeah, yeah. one was with the Roaches, the second time was the Zergling Baneling, and uh, once again, looks like a gentleman's agreement, similar build openers. Yeah, absolutely. We got to show you the pianist at work over there with his fantastic APM. It's, it's kind of scary, really, seeing how fast he moves his hands. Simply because the same thing happened. They both went for a hatch in around 15 supply. They w both went for a pretty late spawning pool, and as a direct result, we will see, at least for the first couple of minutes, a fairly passive game. The question is, where does it go from there? Gas has been taken on both sides right now. So this could, be, as I said before, it usually means we're going to see speed pretty quickly here, especially as it ticks over here for Vibe. His gas has gone over, and there we go. Just a little bit later on the speed there, and speed also kicking off for Sen as well. So nothing out of the ordinary here. But who does what? Vibe's been playing defensively and he has been comfortable around lair tech in this series so far in game one that suited him very well in game two he wasn't able to get there sen prevented him now the question is does sen have another timing attack of his sleeve or is or are we going to see a bit of a role reversal here yeah i'm kind of curious to see exactly how uh, this is going to pan out because sen I, I don't know. I kind of want to see him in late game ZBZ. I wonder if in Heart of the Swarm he's not comfortable either versus the new units or just how the matchup has shaped up recently. But, I mean, we have seen some pretty epic late game ZBZs both in Heart of the Swarm and right at the, the, the wing tips, I guess, of Wings of Liberty there where uh, there was some epic huge macro games, Broodlord versus Broodlord. But uh, the Viper really doesn't have much role here in this matchup. Unfortunately, it is such a fun unit to watch. There is going to be the Baneling Nest. Once again, though, um, it looks like Sins is going to be defensive while Vibe is going to be finishing up his here relatively soon. His yeah. Zergling speed just moments away, and he is making eight lings. Uh, both players are now actually going to be going up to 12 to 14. Well, no, both players keep adding on to that number mm, here, so they could both, really, uh, both definitely be aggressive, which always makes it uh, a very exciting matchup. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Vibe is the more likely candidate to go aggressive. Simply, it's definitely going to be Vibe now. You see Sen's going up to Lair Tech. He had the much earlier Baneling Nest, and the only reason to really do that is if you plan on attacking with it. Otherwise, you can afford to get the Baneling Nest later, which means that you can invest more Lava in drones, or you can save up to go for Tech as well. So Sen is going to be the one that tries to get up there, and we are seeing that roll reversal. And uh, funnily enough, Sen actually gets aggressive, is going to spot quite a lot of nonsense coming in his direction, and is then going to know he's going to need to defend here. Oh, Sen being a little bit dicey there, but of course manages to pull back. And now he's going to have to defend because Vibe has committed to this game attack paused. and has now paused the game. So he's going to commit to the attack slightly later. Uh, he's got a bit of a hotkey problem. Th this is... Uh, this has actually been happening a little bit with HOT so far, actually. Yeah. We've had some hotkey issues, so 
he, he will be getting going in one second here, no doubt. And I guess it's a good job the, uh, the attack hadn't started first before he had to pause in order to get that sorted out. Yeah, and I got to say that uh, when actually at the launch party, when Vi was on stage playing, I it was a ZBZ. He actually had frozen hands, so he lost to one Bane League, which was kind of funny. But that yeah. shows you how you know different things can really affect your gameplay. So changing that hotkey can be make or break between those two players. And it does look like he was able to go ahead and get that underway as we are now back into the game. Yep. And the interesting thing here is Sin is kind of in a pretty good spot this time because he was able to be aggressive without losing anything because yeah, that's yeah. how Zerglings work. Even if you overextend yourself, it doesn't matter because they're so fast, you can't get a, a grip on them. They're just going to slip right through. Yeah, absolutely. And interesting decision to send the drone out there. I guess he was just going to go scout, find out where his enemy was. Well, he's knocking on the door right now. Let's see about this Baneling connection. That's what really matters here. S less Banelings here for Sen, but if he uses them correctly, this is a dance oh! to death. Nice trade right there for Sen. That was three for two. That's what he needed. And he's canceled that attack for the moment. The question is, does Vibe now pull back? If Vibe does pull back, he's in trouble here because he's way behind in tech. Spire has already started. Yeah, he's powering drones. There's no way he's going to continue with this attack. This could be a problem, man. He, he's going to have to prepare for the exact same Spire attack that was th that he threw out at Sen in game one. Now, the difference here for Vibe is going to be that uh, his Lair Tech's now done. He can throw down the Hydrogen, throw down the Spire at any time, but he needs to get that scouting out. There's a minor skirmish going on in the center here as Lings are going to be dancing back and forth, and if he gets one Baneling hit, it can change everything because then all of a sudden you can be aggressive with your own units. The Spire just now starting for uh, Vibe now. Mm. You want to keep an eye on those gas counts. Who's going to have more Mutas? Vibe may actually have those Mutas out in time to defend, especially if he can keep that army busy with his Zerglings. And we'll just have to wait and see. The Overlord going to be scouting that third base up here as well. Vibe, unfortunately, not able to get any good hits uh, or prevent those good hits from happening, so he's not going to be able to deny that expansion. Sin's looking pretty good, but it's definitely not a guaranteed win at this point. It's it's pretty close in terms of the Spire timings. There's about a 30-second gap between the two, so Mutas are definitely going to be out faster for Sen. He's looking to produce seven, maybe eight Mutalisks. Depends if he wants to try and go plus one or not. He's probably just going to power out eight Mutas as soon as this kicks in. Uh, but he actually does need the minerals. He's got the gas for it right now, but he'll need the minerals in a second. Sen trying to cancel his third base. That's not going to happen. That'll be shut down quite easily. And interestingly enough, this delay here from Sen, since he's going plus one flyer carapace, and he's not actually building any mutalisks yet. It, there we go. Mutas are finally there. He could have got those mutas out a lot faster than he did, but he chose to wait a bit, and that may give Vibe what he needs to actually get those mutas up. Unfortunately, Vibe in the meantime loses his third base. Did not cancel that. That is a lot of money right out the window. You do not get a refund on those. That's why not canceling it is actually a huge deal. Those links still powering, and this is why I'm talking about where all of a sudden, you know, if your opponent wins on the ground, that means that not only can their air attacks move freely. Oh, he might get a lot of kills here, though, trapping these links back here. Can he prevent them from slipping away? This is something you almost never see as oh, a circling wow. army getting caught out of position because they're so fast. That's a huge victory for Vibe. He's got his six Mutalists on the way. He's still behind in supply. He is supply blocked as well, which is never good. Both players are going to be going for the armor upgrades. Oh, but uh, Sin does get the cancel on that expansion, but he can't just swoop in with his Mutas now because he lost so many Zerglings and uh, doesn't have a huge drone lead. So Sin definitely in the lead, but uh, not by as much as he would have been. Yeah, that's very, very true. These mutas are going to be an absolute pain, of course. That means that Vibe may just decide to try and attack with these Lings just to try and force the Mutalists to be a little bit more defensive. He knows, of course, that if he can do damage, the Mutas will be forced to pull back. The problem now for Vibe is he's going to be losing Overlords left and right. And when it comes to Muta versus Muta, it's generally the guy with the most wins. Yeah, It's, it's not 100% th that way, but the problem is it's like a knife fight. Yeah? And in fact, Zerg versus Zerg in this kind of level, in early and mid game, is a knife fight with Lings and Bane Lings, and then with Mutas. The range is very short. So so Micro is very, very difficult at that kind of range. We'll see if he's able to pull this off. Flyer Carapace is about to kick in, which is going to also give him an edge here. And if an engagement comes in away from Queens, away from Spore Crawlers with no Hydra Den in sight, then that should be something that Sen should be able to win fairly easily. This is going to be so tough for Vibe right now. I mean, look at the huge supply lead, that third base now kicking in. I want to mention that the drones are just now arriving for Vibe at that third base while Sin has had them mining gas this entire time. A huge circling run by right there. Oh, Vibe's man. trying to Queen's decide, down. am I going to go for the attack right now on the defense? He actually does manage to scare that away for now, but I don't think he has enough units back here to defend it. He can't defend everything at once. He's going to lose this base unless he decides to swoop back, but then that means he's going to be losing his main base. All the drones going down to the main base for Vibe. He is just falling apart now. Sen has been slapping him around the entire time. There's the GG, as we were mentioning before, man, as this.